All right, so it's uh, almost the afternoon. I uh, was able to uh, put together the uh, reviewing the key components of stairs and railings. Quick pick tutorial. So now reviewing the components of railings, uh, the components of railings. The major part of railings are the profiles, different kinds of wrap balusters, and the nested types within each railing family. Additionally, or additional functionality is available to help integrate different railing parts into a more cohesive system or more cohesive systems, plural. In figure 16.6, .6, a common railing is shown to illustrate the fundamental parts of a railing type. Let's take a peek at that. If I can get there. sufficient for now. Okay, as you can see, there are a few railing components and um, families that are in a railing, in rather. And you can manipulate them and create them any way you want. There are certain limitations to a certain extent, code compliance restrictions and code compliant parameters that you're going to have to conform to, but in the process of examining these in greater depth, you'll see it's not an insurmountable task. Now, profiles. The profile is the most basic component used to model a railing. All the rails, posts, and balusters are generated from profile families, and we've discussed this. A profile it's just like uh, anything, you know, that's a profile, profile, right, profile. An outline of something, a two-dimensional profile, it's represented in an outline from one side. So these are generated from profile families. You can have as many profiles per railing as you like, but you can't have more than one shape in a profile family, RFA, right? RFA file. In each profile family, the shape needs to be a closed loop. No gaps or overlapping lines allowed. So you can only have one. Just make it as nice as you want, as ornate as you'd like. Furthermore, all the railing profiles will be swept parallel to their host objects. In figure 16.7, the top rail and all the intermediate rails are simple circular profiles swept along the path of the railing. So, in this figure, let's see if I can give it you a little more. Oops. Helps when you spell correctly. You'll see when you look at these, you'll, uh, you'll find Revit is always leading you right to the right to the right path. So here's a good one. Let's take a look at this one. The railing will be swept along the profile, right? <clears throat> Parallel to their host objects. Along the path of the railing. Now balusters. There are three kind kinds of baluster family templates you can use to customize a railing type. Baluster posts have built-in instance parameters control to control the height of the baluster so that it can adjust automatically 
when used within a railing type in projects, the posts are used at the start and and transitions of railings. So if I was to go to a new family, and you would see baluster, baluster panel, baluster post. So here's a baluster post family template. If we were to create a new baluster, as you see, there's a template for that, a baluster post elevation. And as you see, there are some parameters built in. Baluster height parameter. I'll read it again. Baluster posts have built in instance parameters to control the height of the baluster so that it can adjust automatically when used within a railing type in a project. The posts are used to start and the transitions of railings. So let me close that out just so we can stick to uh, the subject matter. Now, balusters are the main repeated vertical structure of most railing designs. They have instance parameters as well that control the vertical length and the angle at the top and bottom of the baluster. When you create your own custom baluster families, you must constrain the geometry to these reference points so that the baluster will adapt to the settings in the railing type. So if we were to have a new family and go to baluster and hit open, you'll see in the uh, right out of the box where it has some templates that you could use to create your balusters. And again, I'm not a carpenter. But if you're reasonable and logical, you'll see that this is not an insurmountable test that those who strive for a bit more of precision in their work may be able to utilize this platform to, uh, to really take you to the next level. Balusters are the main repeated vertical structure of most railing designs. They have instance parameters. They have instance parameters. Instance parameters. As well, that control the vertical length and the angle of the top and bottom of the baluster. When you create your own custom baluster families, you must constrain the geometry to, the rest of, to these reference planes so the baluster will adapt to the settings in the railing type. Baluster panels. Let's close out this family template. Baluster panels. New family. Baluster panel. Baluster panels have controls much like the baluster, but there are additional reference planes to control, control the overall width of the desired panel. There's one. Another one. There's another one. As you can see, these families can assist you in more ways than one when you're uh, constructing your models. So let me just close out of this baluster panel family. <coughs> Excuse me. Top rail. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, top rail. The top rail is a separate component of a railing type. That is to say, it will not appear in the Edit Rails dialog box. Instead, you will find the top rail settings and the type properties of a railing. And then it consists only of a height and type. The top rail 
is a nested system family that you can that you can find in the project browser on the family's railing top rail type. Locate and double click the uh, circular one and a half inch circular 40 millimeter. You will find more detailed settings to control the subset of railing functionality. Figure 16.10. Let's take a look at some of the properties of top rail. Construction, terminations, and extensions. So if we go back to Reddit, we go down to the in the project browser. Now I know my big fat head is in the way, so I get this really high, so you don't have to look over my head. So you can look over my head. All right, so as you can see, the top rail, <coughs> circular inch and a half. If I right mouse click on that in the family, uh, from the inserted, loaded families that are in this template, you can see that I can look at the uh, type properties of it. Now I'll read it again. It's a separate component of a railing type. That is to say, it will not appear in the edit rails dialog box. Instead, you will find the top rail settings in the type properties of the railing, and they consist only of a height and a type. The top rail is a nested system family. But you can find in the project browser under families, railings, top rail type, locate and double click the circular inch and a half or circular 40 millimeter. You will find more detailed settings to control the subset of railing functionality. Let's take a look at some of the properties of top rail construction, termination, and extensions. Construction. The first category of properties in a top rail defines the basic construction of the rail. Parameter grouped under construction. Here, you will select a profile. And these are all the profiles that are loaded. Where are they loaded from? If you remember, profiles. Right? Really? No preview loop, but we know it's a 2D, right? We know it's going to be a 2D drafted circle. And it'll be swept along a path. So, that's the first category. Here you will select a profile and specify other behavior, such as uh, the default join condition, transitions, and hand clearance. So let's go back to Reddit. There's a default join, a miter or a fillet. Hand clearance. <coughs> Excuse me. And transitions. Gooseneck, none, simple. Terminations. Extension and top terminations grouped. This parameter is uh, grouped on the on the terminations. Beginning, bottom termination none. End, top termination none. Terminations. Another top rail option is defining a termination. This is a family component that can be used at the end of a rail or rail extension. That's a very ornate one. That's very nice. See, that's extremely nice. This one, oh, oh, oh. that's aesthetically pleasing to the eye. That's a beautiful panel. Cold, the frilled form steel. Look at that. Isn't that something? can be used at the end of a rail or rail extension. There is only one termination family loaded in the default project template, but you can create your own family using the railing termination RFT or railing uh, termination RFT metric family template. And uh, I'm not gonna get into that right now, but yeah, open up that template from the Books Companion website. You'll see in that template file, there's a bunch of um, terminations. Now, Extensions. Railing extensions. When you need a rail to
to extend beyond its main sketch definition of the railing, and it, you will. An extension can be specified as part of the rail type, and it won't necessarily be specified, it will be mandated. The extension is an integral part, an integral part of the rail. Integ integrated, it's, in, it's, a, it's an integrated part. It's an integrated part of the rail. So it's controlled by the same properties, such as size or materiality. In the settings for extensions, beginning bottom, you can select an option called plus tread depth. This is to accommodate common building codes that require a, stand, a stair handrail to be extended the length of one tread plus some standard distance. Extension style is a setting that gives you three predefined designs for the rail extension. Wall, floor, or post. Wall. It may have to extend to the wall. Floor. It may have to extend down to the floor. Uh, yeah, down to the floor. Post. It may need to have a post. Okay? So if I was to augment this and say handrail extension wall floor post. Oops, if I could spell it right. Listen to me going on and on about articulation. Well, there's a, po there's a post. Uh, let's see if we can get them all in here. There's another one. ADA compliant stair top handrail extension. ADA compliant. <laughs> People with disabilities. People with disabilities. America, uh, the, uh, the Disability Act, ADA. ADA compliance. Americans with disabilities. ADA compliant handrail. This is important. How else are you going to get into the Social Security office? How else are you going to get into the Welfare office? How else are you going to get into your office? How else are you going to get into uh, to a public space? You know, when you get old, or even the young, some folks are are uh, hindered with disabilities, and most people don't care. But again, some folks do. So. Uh, this is why I, I need to stress this to you. It's uh, the American with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Now, if you do a little history, if you do a little bit, a little bit of history, um, were there are regulations? for businesses and state, uh, state and local governments. And there's disability law. So, um, if you were to uh, basically just do a little research, what is it? Well, if you don't know, you're gonna find out. <laughs> you're gonna find out. Because some, some places you, you, can't, you can't get in, you know. A lot of times you'll uh, even be on your phone, does this place have a handy, is it handicap accessible? So, it was an act to establish a clear and comprehensive prohibition of discrimination on the basis of disability. And uh, thank God for that, right? Thank God for that. And again, all these folks out there, uh, these uh, protesters, complaining about this, complaining about that, you know, complaining about the government, it, it, it disgusts me. It disgusts me to a certain extent. It disgusts me because, and I hate to go over on a tangent, but the only thing worse than authority is the lack of it. And the sooner you get that through your thick skull, the better off you'll be. 
So extensions are important. Extensions are important. It uh, it needs to extend sometimes beyond its mean sketch definition. Now, you can customize a Rails extension by pressing the tab key to select the rail, then click Edit Rail in the contextual tab of the ribbon. Go back to the ribbon. As you see, extension style, wall for post, length plus tread depth, all important parameters. So if I set to cancel, let me, uh, let's get a, let's get a railing, let's get a quick railing. Just sketch it over here. Zoom in on it and you can see, well there it is. And I was to take a peek at it and look at the type properties. Well, there it is in 3D. And if you look at the rail structure of this non-continuous uh, rail structure, you'll see uh, in the dialog box, well, there's layers. And as I go through them, you'll start to see that this is a very powerful tool that is designed to help. I'm here to help. And again, here's the profile for this particular railing. And if I was to uh, change that, you could see. Now this one's elliptical and this one's rectangular. So let's just get this back to where it was. Ooh, C channel. That's something else. That's uh, a little more structural steel, but it's still a, it's still a profile. Circular handrail. Fine. And let's get this one back down to a circular handrail. Oh, so the right. It's it's a, it's a one inch, right? It's a one inch diameter. All right, so, well, there's that. So now, you can customize a Rails extension by pressing the tab key to select the rail, then click Edit Rail in the contextual tab in the ribbon. So I have to cancel out of that, cancel out of that, cancel out of that, uh, within the contextual tab of the ribbon. Oops. Excuse me. system family that is nested within a railing family and its properties are almost identical to those of the top rail family. The one exception is that handrails can use support families. From the project browser navigate to families, railings, handrail types and double click the circular one and a half inch or pipe wall mount in the metric equivalent. Railings. Hand rail type, circular one and a half inch. Double click or right mouse click and hit type properties. Family, hand rail type, circular one and a half inch. Pipe wall mount, rectang rectangular wall mount. As you see, there are profiles here. And there are default joints and there are extensions. And, and it's the same as the, uh, the terminations. We're almost there. Stay with me here. These are the type properties of the uh, handles. Here we go. Beyond selecting a support family, you will notice settings for layout that include align with post, fixed number, maximum spacing, minimum spacing. 
and, uh, and minimum spacing. These are the main controls that will enable or disable the other settings for supports including spacing, justification, and number. So, rail structure continuous. Let's return to the type properties of the main railing framework. In the project browser, navigate to Families Railings Railing and double click Guardrail Height 90 millimeter in the metric exercise file. Hmm. No, fantastic. In the rail structure non continuous parameter, well, rail structure, let's return to the type properties. Let's close this. Let's go to uh, railing, handrail pipe, type properties. It says guardrail pipe. There it is. I have the wrong one. Guardrail pipe. All right, mouse click, type properties. Let's bring this over here. Okay, so now, in the rail structure, non continuous parameter, click the edit button to open the edit rails non continuous dialog box. In this interface, you can insert rails defined by profile families as well as non, as, as well as set their relative height, horizontal, offset distance, and material. These rails are considered non-continuous because they will be intersected by any balusters you define in the baluster placement settings. Click OK to exit this dialog box. We haven't gotten that yet. Rail structure, non-continuous, edit, preview. Well, let's go through it. There's the first one. And um, they will be intersected by any balusters the rails are considered non-continuous because they will be intersected by any balusters. Well, there are two, one, there's one baluster here. That's the baluster. And they're being intersected by it. In this interface, you can insert rails defined by profile families. I just inserted one. Inserted another one. Right? Defined by profiles. Let's make this one elliptical. Let's make this one rectangular. Let's make this one square. Hit apply. Well, now there's a lot, right? Height zero, zero, zero. Offset zero, zero, zero. They throw them all down here. Right? They throw them all down here. Now, I could change that height, right? Let's see, the rail one is at three foot. Now you gotta know your code compliance. So you get the point, right? You, you get the point. I can, you can add any, any number of railings within code compliance. So let me just get rid of these before I go off on the tangent. Now, if you hold on shift, you can do the 3D rotate in this preview dialog box, just so you know. Okay, so now, that's the rail structure, non-continuous. Baluster placement. When you return to the type properties of the railing, type properties of the railing, type guardrail pipe, Locate the baluster placement parameter and click the edit button to open the edit baluster placement dialog box. As you can see, there are options for the main, pro, uh, main, main pattern and the posts and an option for how the balusters will be used on stairs. The main pattern sections of the, uh, section of the dialog box is where you would assemble all your baluster types and then space and host them accordingly. You can also decide how you want the pattern to repeat or not repeat itself at the ends of sketch line segments. The post, post section is used to specify which baluster is used as start, corner, and end conditions, and the frequency of corner posts. Click OK to close both open dialog boxes. Well, baluster placement, edit. Name, baluster family, base, base offset, top, top offset, distance from previous, and offset, uh, break pattern at, angle, pattern length, Justify, beginning, end, center, spread pattern to fit, excess length fill, truncate pattern, 
excess length fill. Use baluster per tread on stairs, balusters per tread one, baluster family, posts, start post, corner post, end post, baluster family, baluster post uh, round one. And as you can see, the uh, start post is pretty much the same as the baluster, right? It's a baluster round one. That doesn't have to be that way. We could make this post anything, you know, per code, anything you want. Baluster steel flat upright. Let's try it. Let's take a look at that one. Well, there's there's the start. Right, said Fred. There's the start of the uh, of the railing, the guardrail, and then this would be the post, right? And what did we say? What did we say? Wall floor post, right? Wall floor post. Offset. Base offset, top offset, space top offset, base, all of these primers. Corner posts at, at each segment end, angles greater than, never, right? So it's an intuitive tool. It's an intuitive tool. It's not, it's not this silly software platform home designer or some knockoff 2020 software that you can get at Home Depot or Google. It's not Google SketchUp either. It's not. It, it's, it's, it's a dominant software platform. It's not just a software platform. It is a persistent dominant software platform. It's designed and programmed by the folks that, uh, that demanded the form at this level. So the main pattern section of the ballast box is where you would assemble all your baluster types. The main pattern, the main pattern. Here, main pattern. You can also decide how you want the pattern to repeat, right? Will not repeat itself at the ends of sketch line segments. The post section is used to specify whether which balusters use the start, corner, and end conditions and the frequency of the corner posts. Click OK to close both open dialog boxes. That is a high level overview of the properties of railings and what they are used for. We have covered the primary features necessary to create great railings. Railings consist of nested families. And some of them, all they do is tweet nonsense all day, all day long. Tweet this, tweet that. It's ridiculous, to be, to be honest with you. Railings consist of nested families. <laughs> they consist of nested families, man. They do. Oh, you know me, my you know me, my props. You know how I love to illustrate a point. The railings consist of nested families. Is your family nested? Is your nest eggs going to be sufficient for your family? That nest egg that you're so uh, that you're so concerned about. Stairs are divided into runs. These nested families, these nested families, um, stairs are divided into runs, landings and supports. When you first select a railing or chair or stair, you'll be selecting the parent type. You could then click edit type in the properties palette to change the child types. However, there are some unique instance parameters and uh, instance properties and editing capabilities exposed. When you use the tab keys to direct, directly select one of the nested elements. For stairs, one of the important features of a run is whether it begins or ends with a riser. This property is critical in determining how a stair interacts with an adjacent floor slab. 
depending on the type of the stair you create, these properties are part of either the stair type or the run type. In the newer, newer style of stair, the only way you can access these properties is by hovering your mouse pointer over a stair and then pressing the tab key once to select the run. The instance parameter of the run will then be shown in the properties palette. You can also assess the run width at, in the same manner. For railings, you can use the tab key to assess or access it, uh, editing functions function of top rails and handrails. If you hover the mouse pointer over a top rail and press the tab key once to select the rail, you will find an edit rail button in the contextual ribbon. Activating this tool allows you to customize the path of the continuous rails to build a customized extension. Now, we're going to stop it there and look at my little prop. Obviously, every every nested family might have a snake in the grass, right? Every nested family. Sometimes, so you don't even want them near the house and you take them, right? And you can manipulate them, these, these railings, if you will, these nested stairs, these nested staring uh, families. Uh, because, again, it's more to, architecture is the study of space. And how many of these do you want in your development? Anyway, it's your house, right? It's, it's your property. If, if, if it's the culture of your firm to have, you know, this go on day to day, you're going to get exactly what it is that you're looking for. So, again, Revit has a, uh, an effect on the user and the organization and the culture of the company. So, if your office is in the, if, if your organization is in the business of building homes, you know, Maybe you should clean up your own backyard first before you start pointing fingers. Because let me tell you, I'll leave you on this note. A little bit more about, uh, about me. A little bit more about me. Um, because I told you, I'm, I'm not a carpenter. I, I'm not a carpenter. I'm definitely not a carpenter. So... We're going to be getting into the actual practice of creating some stairs and understanding the stair tools and rules on our way up in the next exercise. Uh, so uh, just stay tuned because we're, uh, we're going to get really, really deep into this because um, we've got to get through this. Um, we're going to be drawing profiles of quadrants and we're going to be uh, understanding the stringer. <laughs> stringer. We're going to be um, delving into complex tread supports with balusters. Um, and you'll see from the exercises ahead that we're going to uh, we have a lot to do and we're going to have uh, a lot of tools that we can use to uh, enamor ourselves against um, risk in completing these structures so that they're com code compliant and, and the, these models are code compliant and then we're going to annotate them we're going to annotate them we're going to move on and then actually create some family families. And it's going to take effort on, on my part, which is not a problem. Um, it's a few pages. Uh, and then we're going, to, uh, we're going to get to the bottom line after we uh, take a look at some uh, railing tools or you know, other objects like, like light posts and lamp posts and, and uh, cantilevered railings. as like a shading device. And then we're going to look at a uh, lamppost to distribute a long path uh, as a baluster family. So we can use this for any repetitive element that uh, must be placed on center and evenly distributed along a path. So like I said, a little bit more about me. Before we get to the bottom line of this particular chapter, before we get there, I just want you to know that you, you really need to pay attention because we're up to part five, and part five is the documentation. And, and this is, you know, where you're going to have to produce. You're going to have to produce documentation, you know. Proof, proof. You're going to have to provide records, records, proof. So like I said, a little bit more about me. Well, my thing, one of the, my, I have a pet peeve. And the pet peeve is false bravado. 
I really, I don't don't particularly care for false bravado, nor do I care for uh, intimidating management. It's just one of my pet peeves. I uh, I've seen it, and I, I I've been in a lot of companies, and I've seen a lot of company cultures. And I see how they staff and uh, how they uh, extract the most from their employees. So a little bit more about me. The only way I can really tell you about me is for you to obviously watch my videos. You can scroll down to get to know me. But um, I insist, and I, I, I always say this, and, and this is for, you know, the class that I'm going to teach in a few years, you know, to the three-year-olds, you're going to meet the same people on the way up the corporate ladder, and then you're going to meet the same people on the way down. And I insist that that be the case, don't you see? I insist that you meet the same people on the way down, you know, as you're climbing up the corporate ladder, because um, I insist that that's the case. I, I'm going to insist that you meet the same people on your way down. And I'm going to insist that comes to fruition. So, rest assured, I have your best interests in mind, but I shall insist that uh, we persist with these tools. Cyclone vendor? Think again. Veil threat. <laughs>